Graham. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the four worst things you can do before going for a run. I'm going to take the four topics that were explained in Harry Run's viral video of the four worst things you can do before a run, but I'm going to break it down into a lot more detail of each of these four aspects. Now, the first worst thing you can do before a run is static stretching. Hold that for 30 seconds. Now, not all static stretching is bad per se. It's about the amount of duration, time spent static stretching acutely right before you go out for your run. Over the years, static stretching has shown to decrease performance, may increase prevalence of injury, decrease muscle strength, power output, and explosiveness when done right before your running activity. Now the type of stretching you need to avoid acutely before a run is any static stretching greater than 60 seconds. Static stretching greater than 60 seconds at a time has the most negative effect on the problems that I mentioned prior. Now, short-term static stretching, along with a proper dynamic warm-up, short-term meaning less than 60 seconds, may actually decrease our prevalence of musculotendinous injuries if done below 60 seconds. Short duration static stretching less than 60 seconds actually very little impairs strength and power output. Now even if there is a non-significant small loss in strength and power when it comes to short duration static stretching, I still want short duration static stretch, especially say you're in high school and you're vibing for a championship berth where a couple seconds is gonna distinguish you from moving on or going home, then I probably wouldn't static stretch before your event. In other aspects of training, short-term static stretching is probably okay. How your muscles fire and the tension in your muscles doesn't seem to be impaired by short-term static stretching compared to long-term static stretching. If you're going to stretch, I prefer a 2.54 less than or equal to second stretch, several bouts of that type of stretching called active isolated stretching. It's more of a dynamic stretch. I did do a video on that topic and I will link that video at the end of this video. Now you may say for example, but what if my hamstrings are tight? Well, you have to ask yourself why your hamstrings are tight in the first place. The body adapts very specifically to the demands imposed on it. So if you spend a lot of time sitting, your hamstrings are chronically shortened. They're adapting to a shortened position. If you have lower back dysfunction, the hamstrings can get tight to compensate for what's going on in your lower back. There doesn't necessarily have to be pain. Tightness in muscles is not due to a lack of static stretching. Tightness in muscles is due to a compensation pattern for what is going on elsewhere in your body, which can be a result from too much progressive load, running too much, running too far than your body's already used to, not giving your body enough time to adapt relatively to the demands that you're imposing on it, lack of firing patterns between different muscle groups, not enough recovery time between hard work bouts. Just because you are running pain-free does not mean you're running in a state that correlates to a lower prevalence of running-related injury. Number two, the second worst thing you can do before going for a run is eating or drinking too much before you run. Consumption of food to fuel should not be taken less than three to four hours from the time you're about to run. The foods you should consume should be high in easily digestible carbohydrates, moderate in protein, low in fat and fiber because fat and fiber can slow down the digestive process as the food moves through your gut. Eating or drinking not only too much but not eating the right foods can lead to cramps and digestive distress. Mm -hmm. If you still have food in your gut digesting when you go out for a run, when you're running, blood is shunting to your limbs. You're working limbs and taking blood away from your gut you have a higher chance of getting a side stitch and or a cramp. So there is really no reason to down 10 pancakes right before your 5K race. Now, anything less than 60 to 90 minutes of moderate intensity running, pre-race fuel does not matter as much because it is shown that after these bouts, glycogen within your muscle cells that you filled from eating days and hours prior is still sufficient after the 16 to 90 minutes of moderate intensity running. For runs shorter than 90 minutes in the 24 hours prior, you should be getting 7 to 12 grams per kilogram of body weight to suffice for you through that 90 minute run. If a run of moderate intensity is greater than 90 minutes of activity, in the 36 to 48 hours prior, you should be getting roughly 10 to 12 grams per kilogram of body weight of carbohydrate. And you should probably eat beforehand as well. 
If you're not eating enough in the day or days leading up to your run, your important run, you will know. Then by all means, eat before your run, no matter the duration, and work with a qualified healthcare provider to get your diet down so you can really feel great during your runs. I will do a separate video on running fasted. Shameless plug, if you are interested in having me be your coach to get you ready for your next race or your fall marathon, I am coaching online on the Trackster app. Link in the description down below. Download the app. You can shoot me a request on there. We can talk and we can talk about how we can get you spicy and ready for your next race. All right, now, number three, not using the bathroom before you run. You know what happens if you don't go to the bathroom before you run? You go during. Mm -hmm. You should train your body to go to the bathroom before you run, even if you don't really feel like you have to go to the bathroom. Nothing is worse than being in a race and having to stop to use the bathroom and add on precious time to an event you've been training months for. If you try to go before your warm up, but you can't, I suggest you go do your warm up and maybe drink some coffee, then you should probably be able to go then as that all gets everything moving. Mm -hmm. If your bladder is full when you run, your blood pressure and your heart rate will be higher, which would obviously affect heart rate variability, which may affect your performance, and plus it's gonna make you anxious, so it's a double whammy. You're gonna have a higher heart rate from having a full bladder and have a higher heart rate from being anxious for the fact that you have a full bladder, so let it out. If you have to drop a sinker and you hold it, a similar concept to your bladder, probably more so due to the anxiety than the fact that you have to drop a sinker itself, your blood pressure will get high as well as your pulse. Now, I usually do my main runs in the morning. I trained myself to eat food by a certain time in the evening prior, because I know that I will get that food through me by the time the next morning comes, depending on what time I eat the night before. So do what Fat Bastard does in Austin Powers and just look at what's in the toilet. Chances are, if you ate corn or whatever, you'll probably see it there, so you know it went through you. I didn't have any corn. Last but not least, number four, not listening to your body when you need rest, relative rest. If you wake up in the morning of a harder workout or a harder run, and you've been keeping track of your resting heart rate over time, and you notice that when you wake up said morning, that your heart rate is about eight to 11 beats higher than it usually is when you first wake up in the morning, then it's probably best to move that workout to a different day, maybe the next day, or scratch it all together. Never make up a workout just because you missed it and then double back, just completely scratch it or move it to the next day. Your resting heart rate is a good indicator if you have recovered, not only from your previous run or workout, but how your body is handling life's stressors. Believe it or not, the human body does not distinguish stressors. Work, relationships, school, running are all stressors that your body has to deal with. Everything that life throws your way will affect how your body recovers from running. If you currently have pain or have something bugging you, obviously get checked by a qualified healthcare provider. But if your level of pain is at a four out of 10 or less and does not get worse when you run, gets better when you run, does not feel worse after you run and in the hours after you run, then you are probably okay to run. If you train accordingly, manage life stressors, get enough sleep, eat right, then you probably don't really need truly a day off. Just because you feel good on a certain day does not mean that you should blow that run out of the water. That does not mean that you should run longer. That does not mean that you should run faster for the planned workout for that day. It is all about progressive load on the body and its tissues. I'm going to do a separate video on the causes of running related injuries, so stay tuned for that. If you fam want to learn about 10 common running myths, check out this video here. If you fam want to learn how to do active isolate stretching that I mentioned earlier, check out this video here. Be sure to check out Traxer down below and hit me up if you're looking for a coach. Like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell for when I post my next video. Love you guys, catch you guys next time, peace.